They told me a heat pump would be expensive. It won't heat your house. It just won't work in the UK in the winter. Well, we've struggled through 90 days of a pretty cold overcast winter. And were they right? Was it a huge mistake? Should have just stayed with gas. Let's dig into the numbers and find out. Three months ago, we worked with Octopus Energy to get our heat pump installed. What's the ownership experience been like? How much energy did it use? And ultimately, what did it cost us to run? And should we have stayed with gas? Let's answer those questions and a whole lot more. So let's start with the ownership experience because my family used to have a favorite saying in winter and it was, can we turn the heating up a little bit more? It's feeling a bit cold. I'm gonna pop up a graph here. This shows you the average temperature across the last three months in my living room. And as you can see, during the early evening when we're maybe sitting down to watch a bit of TV, um, we keep it at around 21 degrees. And at night when we go to bed, the whole house drops down to about 17 degrees. But we stay in that period in all rooms of the house. And you know what? Nobody is asking me to turn the temperature up or down. Everyone is just happy with the house being at a very comfortable temperature. Well, what about the noise? No one's even noticed it. I've never had any complaints from either anyone in my house or anyone in my neighbor's house about the noise this thing makes. In fact, about two miles in that direction is a major A road and actually a major A road junction. And I hear that more than I hear that, especially when I'm more than about one to two meters away from the heat pump. What about hot water? Well, we have limitless hot water. We have this configured so that when the temperature in the water tank drops below a certain threshold, that this will automatically kick in and reheat the hot water. That means whenever anybody wants to take a shower, use some hot water in the house for any other needs, there is constant hot water available. So let's take a look at what did our gas boiler actually cost us to run? Well, I went back to Ecotricity, who were my gas provider at the time, and I asked them for um, gas bills for uh, December, January, and February one year ago. And we spent £93 on gas in December, we spent £124 in January, and £101 in February. Now, gas prices have changed ever so slightly there, but not by a meaningful amount that will throw the numbers off. So remember those numbers, because we're going to come back to those in a minute. Before we talk about energy usage, let's talk about the external temperature, because the efficiency of your heat pump depends on the external temperature. We have a temperature sensor on the other side of the house, and depending on what that sensor is sensing, this will adjust the flow temperature of the heat pump. So we had a low temperature of minus five degrees, and we had a high of 14 degrees. But most days we were around about two or three degrees. That's Celsius, not Fahrenheit. Basically, we had a mix of relatively cold nights, sub-zero temperatures at nighttime, and cold to mild days through most of the month. Then as we get into the end of February, early March, this large glowing orange thing in the sky returned, and we've seen some really nice weather. So let's start with the coefficient of performance. Now, coefficient of performance is a simple formula where you take the amount of energy the device used, and you divide it by the amount of heat that it produced, and that gives you a number. Now, taking them in small chunks isn't really a good indication of how your heat pump is performing. What you would normally do is take it over a season and you'll get something called a seasonal coefficient of performance, an SCOP. So the individual coefficients were December, we were at 3.88. In January, we dropped to 3.32. And in February, we were at 3.43. That gives us a seasonal coefficient of 3.54 which is pretty good for the cold part of the winter. And obviously, as we start to expand that seasonal, seasonal coefficient over the next couple of months, I fully expect to see that well into the fours and possibly even closer to five. So how much energy did this use? Well, in December, we used 388 kilowatt hours for both combined heating and hot water. In January, that rose significantly to 607 kilowatts. That's where we had the coldest temperatures. And then in February, we dropped back to 438 kilowatt hours. Now, what did all that cost? Well, I'm going to give you three prices. 
So the way I'm going to give you these prices is we're going to use the amount of heat generated each month and we're going to work out how much gas we would have needed with a combi boiler running at about 90% efficiency to be able to produce that same volume of heat. We'll then look at the octopus cozy tariff, or cozy octopus as they like to call it. And what we'll do is we'll take the three different price points during the day, we'll average those out, and we'll give you a price for if you were just on the cozy tariff with no solar, no batteries or anything else, just using the smart tariff from octopus. And then finally, I'll give you the price what I paid. So let's start with the combi boiler. So gas um, during that three month period, and I know it's just about to go up, um, was 6.26 pence per kilowatt hour here in East Anglia. To achieve the same volume of heat, the gas boiler would have used 1,672 kilowatt hours of gas in December. That would have been 104 pounds and 74 pence. In January, it would have needed 2,243 kilowatt hours. That would have cost 140 pounds and 43 pence. And then in February, 1,667 kilowatt hours for a price of 104 pounds and 40 pence. So if we total up those three months, the total bill for December, January and February would have been 349 pounds and 59 pence plus an extra 26 pounds and 45 P for the standing charge. That would have given us a grand total for the winter of 376 pounds and four pence. Now, I'm gonna put that number up in the corner of the screen so that you don't forget it. And then we're gonna move on and we're gonna talk about Cozy Octopus. Now, Cozy Octopus is a smart tariff. You do need a smart meter to be able to get it, but Cozy Octopus gives you three different price points during the day. There are three low price points, there is a normal price point, and then there is a high price point between the hours of about four and seven in the afternoon when energy use is the most expensive. So we take those three prices and we average them all out. That gives us a price of 24.18 pence per kilowatt hour. Now I'm gonna assume here, you don't have solar, you don't have batteries, you're just using the cozy tariff and you're running the heat pump in the same way that I run mine. That means the house is a constant temperature. You're not ramping the heat pump up and down, turning it on and turning it off. You're just allowing it to do its thing, keep the house hot, keep the hot water ready to use. So for those three months, what would you have paid? Well, in December, you would have required 388.16 kilowatt hours. That would have been 93 pounds and 86 pence. In January, 607.79 kilowatt hours for a price of 146 pounds 96. And then in February, 438 kilowatt hours for a price of 105 pounds and 91 P. That would give you a total of 346 pounds and 73 P. And don't forget the standing charge. With electricity, it is much more expensive than with gas. So that would have added a further 43 pounds and 98 pence to the bill, giving us a grand total of 390 pounds and 71p. So again, we're gonna put that up there next to the gas price. Now you might start with looking at this and thinking, hang on, gas is actually looking like it's gonna be the cheaper option. Well, now let's look at what it cost me. Now. In all the other videos that I've done on this topic, people have said, well, it's all right for you. You've got solar and batteries. Yes, we made that personal choice. We invested in solar panels. We invested in batteries because we knew it would help drive our energy prices down. But by quite how much? So for those that don't know, the way we operate our heat pump, like I say, is we allow it to run in constant state heating. I.e., It keeps the house at a constant temperature. It keeps the hot water ready to use. We're on the Octopus Intelligent Go tariff. That's because we have two electric vehicles sitting out the front of the house. They charge during that cheap period at night. Now we get six hours from 11.30 at night till 5.30 in the morning of cheap rate electricity at seven pence per kilowatt hour. And again, that might be going up on the 1st of April. We're waiting to see what impact the new tariffs, uh, the new costs have on the tariff. But during those six hours, we suck in about 30 kilowatt hours of power and we store those in our batteries in the garage. And those batteries then feed the house for most of the day. And all through the winter period, we managed to get through 99% of the day uh, running the heat pump without having to draw power from the grid. There were those odd days where the heat pump was working extra hard because the temperature never got above freezing and we occasionally had to draw a little bit of power at the end of the day because we've exhausted the batteries. 
So what did we pay for those three months? Well, we used exactly the same amounts of energy as we used for the other calculations. In December, for our 388.16 kilowatt hours, we paid 27 pounds and 17 pence. In January, 607.79 kilowatt hours for a total of 42 pounds and 54. And in February, 438 kilowatt hours for 30 pounds and 66 pence. That gave us a grand total for the three months of 100 pounds and 34 pence. And then we add on that same £43.98 for the electric standing charge, giving us a grand total for the winter of £144.32. So, the scores on the doors. The gas boiler would have cost £376.04. Cozy Octopus would have actually cost more. It would have cost £390.71. Me, I paid £144.32. This is why we installed solar and batteries, because it allows us to really bring our energy prices down. The solar panels we have on our roof, the batteries we have in our garage, have all paid for their, themselves already. Some of them are, are quite old now, some of them are relatively new, but every single one of them has returned every single pound that we spent on them, and now it's just pure profit. And that's what allows us to drive the cost of running this heat pump down. Now remember, we were paying 100 pounds a month on average for gas during the last winter. The heat pump is now costing us roughly 40 pounds a month, saving of 60 pounds per month on our energy bills. So in conclusion, if you don't have solar and or batteries, a heat pump might actually cost you a little bit more to run than if you were running on gas. In this case, it's about 3.9% more. But there are some real advantages. The constant heat in your home Instead of having to put a schedule on your boiler so it heats the house up and lets it cool down, just having your house at a constant temperature is really nice. There are no noxious fumes. The only thing coming out the front of this heat pump is cold air, instead of the flue on the opposite side of the house that was pumping out noxious fumes, which I'm sure some of them were floating across the fence into my neighbor's garden. The servicing costs on a heat pump are significantly less. Now, as I said, we had a pretty old gas boiler and we didn't want it to break down and be without heat for a long period of time. So we had it under a maintenance contract. Probably one of the reasons it lasted as long as it did is it had a yearly service. That service contract cost us £22 a month. Now, you might be able to get yours for a little bit less. I think ours was a bit more expensive because it was an old boiler. But still, £22 a month to have a service contract and a yearly inspection and maintenance on the boiler. Our heat pump costs £9 a month for that exact same level of service. And the other advantage of the heat pump is the service contract has a service level agreement. Within placing the call, we will have somebody out to the heat pump within 24 hours. Now, the last advantage for those that do have solar and or batteries is this thing will effectively run for free for about 80% of the year. As I mentioned earlier, and you can probably see by the fact that I'm squinting, the first few days of March, well, the last few days of February and the first few days of March, the weather's been glorious. The solar panels have been producing power. This thing has run for free now for 10 straight days. It hasn't cost us a single penny to run it. And that's because all of the, all of the power for it is coming off the roof. So if your only criteria is to save money, a gas boiler is gonna be 3% cheaper than running a heat pump. Until the next time the price of gas goes up and we'll redo the calculations at that point. If you've got solar and batteries, a boiler is gonna be 160% more expensive to run than running a heat pump. So for those that will inevitably fill the comments with, well, how much did your solar cost? Mine was quite expensive because I installed parts of it 15 years ago. But all of those parts have paid for themselves now. Even the stuff that we installed just a few years ago, the compounding effect of that investment has meant that everything has paid for itself. We don't owe anybody anything, it belongs to us, and it generates savings for us every single day of the week. Now, a solar installation isn't as expensive as you might think. There are a lot of great deals out there. There are a lot of people who are offering 0% interest loans. Um, I believe that there's currently an octopus uh, scheme where you can get 0% uh, on a plan to install solar and batteries in your house. 
go check out your bank, sometimes uh, green mortgage extensions. If you're thinking about putting solar and batteries in, the bank will classify that as a green investment and will probably give you either a preferred rate or maybe even 0% interest on that money. If you're thinking about getting a heat pump, there are referral codes down in the description and I'll pop one up on the screen now. If you use my referral code, you will get £100 off your heat pump. They will also give me £100, which I will donate to good causes. But